Um, yeah, I'm going to make a follow-up video because I called it a Core XY machine. <laughs> and <laughs> The and internet my... made sure to tell you you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, that, they definitely did. Okay, that will be this video. Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing, and in this video, my channel is going to hit 10,000 subscribers. At least, <laughs> it looks like that. Joel Telling of the 3 Printing Nerd helped a lot. It was awesome to be on, on his show. I wanted to make a food printer and take it on the road with me to start printing at a, a chef's restaurant because I'm not good at making food, and uh, but I'm good at printing. <laughs> I, uh, I really like his uh, new format. Uh, it keeps everything up uh, up to date about 3D printing and it's uh, nice and bite-sized. I'm uh, definitely going to watch all of those videos. Thanks Joel for giving me this opportunity to uh, get on your show. It was a great chat and um, I really enjoyed it. The channel is going to hit 10,000 subscribers during this video and I didn't have <laughs> The, the chance to make a uh, subscriber special but I'm going to do something special in this video something that I haven't done before and that's taking a look into one of my previous designs you might have a hunch about which design I'm talking the upgrade I've made in my last video in, <laughs> in which I called it Core XY this one Core XY, XY is a design this takes away the whole cost of real Core XY, XY. XY. please don't spread John. misinformation Core XY. I'm, uh, I do not even know what a Core XY is I've learned a lot from the comments. If you want to see someone making a real Core XY machine I would suggest following Thomas Haugen aka 3D Print Viking Thomas Haugen is working on his uh, Aymir or Umir, it's a uh, 600 by 600 by 600 and I thought that my uh, machine was big but his machine will even be bigger. So I'm going to change the name of the title in the description. Oh, let's, let's just do it right now. Let's call it a moving portal. I didn't expect this much interest in this uh, mod so I decided to make this video to show what this mod actually can do, how well it performs. And I have made a small design flaw, <laughs> which I'm going to show. I have decided to write a piece of software to show how well this performs. What this thing does is if I run it, it, um, well, let's set this to one hertz. It shows a sine wave. Well, I can s select several waves, square, saw, and sine in this case. And I can uh, adjust the frequency and I can adjust the, the traveling distance, so the amplitude. And this is converted into G codes. This is G code what is created. And I'm going to find the sweet spot yeah, on which the resonance frequencies are. And there is a nice video made by CNC Kitchen. And I'm going to use his knowledge. He has an accelerometer analyzer. I have a similar thing installed on my phone. It's an awesome app. I'm going to put a link to the description. I'm going to mount this to the printer. And at first I thought, well, if I'm going to mount this to the gantry, then this will influence the resonance frequencies. And this is a heavy phone. But on the other hand, I'm going to add a direct drive extruder, which has some weight to it. I'm going to run my torch software, find those resonance frequencies and uh, see how much the printer will bend. Before I'm going to do that, I'm going to show my design flaw, my failure. Okay, let's do one more refresh. Ho, 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 man. Ah, oh, just in time. Whoa, ho, ho. Let's refresh one more time. Yeah, ho, ho, yes. F yeah, man. Thanks everyone for subscribing and for <laughs> And for sharing my videos, I don't want to hit refresh before <laughs> someone decided to unsubscribe. That would be a bit of a bummer. Yep, I've made a design flaw. If I'm going to move the printer all the way to the back, 
or to the front. Then it collapses with the motor mount and at the front it collapses with the belt tensioners. And another problem that was mentioned by a viewer from who I think is a sharpshooter because this was very well noticed. The belt at the top isn't uh, perfectly horizontal. It's not in line with uh, where the belt is mounted on these brackets. So this gantry will move faster at the beginning and the end than it will in the middle. I've made a redesign. These parts are a bit higher. So now it's in line with the pulley and this part goes over the motor mount. So this should be the fix of two problems. Let me just put these on here and then uh, let's continue with uh, torturing this machine. It's 3550 grams. Well now you know. And the weight of the bed. I'm going to do that when I'm going to add that silicon heater. I can measure the weight of the glass plate. Twenty four hundred and fifty. This aluminium plate and that aluminium plate on the bottom must weigh less than one kilos in order to be lighter than the gantry. I put this thing back together. The gantry is square. I still have to modify these belt tensioners, but for this test, it's not that necessary. Now, if I'm going to use a, a square wave on that machine, it's going to be some sort of sine wave in the end due to its jerk and acceleration settings. And I can home everything. Yes, and if I press center X, Y, then it goes to the center at a speed of 5000 millimeters per second and I can uh, raise and lower the Z height like this and uh, start testing at a Z height of 50 millimeters and the idea is to do this at several Z heights now it's 1 hertz, 1 millimeter and if I press start then it should move the X axis in well, 1 millimeter at 1 hertz and that's what it's doing right now I can do the same thing for the y-axis. Let's start. Uh, point one. Now let's see what happens if I use a square wave. I haven't done this before, but it should go immediately from point A to point B. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> It looks like I can do this faster, 0.5. I should find a 120 BPM song for this. <laughs> Two. I have to reduce this. Here we go. And now it's wobbling. <laughs> so this is basically the test. I can uh, control it and move it as fast as I want, well, as fast as the printer is capable of uh, dealing. It's placed on these soft, on these soft blocks. Well, there is quite a lot of movement on that. Uh, I need a sturdier surface, and this table itself does have resonance frequencies as well. First, I'm going to show how this works with the phone. Okay, I'm going to place my phone on here. I've installed an app, Firefox, not Firefox, but Firefox. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. You can download it from uh, F-Droid and it can 
do a lot of measurements and it can save the data into Excel and the CSV. Okay, this is the complete test setup and now it's recording. You can see all three axes and let's run it. Okay, now it's definitely wobbly. And what I can do is I can make a sweep to see where the resonance frequencies actually are. I'm just going to modify the software and uh, make the sweep and do the sweep at different heights and not at this table and not at these feet because I already saw that these feet were bouncing as well. Okay, I've modified the software a bit. Now it's uh, I can do a sweep. So I have to go from, uh, I can say zero to three in steps of 0.1. So if I start, then it will do this. Yeah, let's see what happens if I just press start. Oh, fucking shit me. Maybe I should home it first. Yeah, disconnect this. <laughs> okay, the highest spikes are found within the last millimeter. And now we really are going to hit those uh, resonance frequencies. Yes, I will do that sequence at several heights. And uh, let's see how we can torture this machine to death. Okay, I think this is an interesting point to pause the video. You see that the maximum deflection is 4 mm at the sea height of 400 mm. But that does mean that that 4 mm is actually at the nozzle itself. I did some simple calculations to determine the actual nozzle deflection. Now this is the worst case. I've done a test at 100 mm, 200, 300 and 400. I have made something in Excel which shows, which shows that trend. I've determined that at the worst case, the deflection is 4 mm at its height of 670. So the angle is 0 0.34 degrees. Done the same at 100 mm and that angle was 0 0.17 degrees. The higher you get, the larger the deflection, 
and the more uh, the more influence that angle has so as you can see in this graph it's somewhat exponential and this is the total deflection so from from all the way to the left to all the way to the right this is the worst case scenario so you only hit it at these specific resonance frequencies if i'm printing the rims uh, i will go up to 20 200 the maximum deflection that i'm going to get is one millimeter that's only at these resonance frequencies so the way as it is now i think it will do for just printing the rims indeed we have z wobble and especially at these greater heights of 400 millimeters the resonance frequency at the 400 millimeter height was at a travel distance of 0.65 millimeters but it will be different depending on how well you've printed it how much uh, layers you've printed and uh, which material you've used i've printed everything with polycarbonate yeah with six parameters and six top and bottom layers so it's a big chunk of polycarbonate you cannot get it much more stiffer than i have uh, managed to get it here the stiffer it gets the higher those frequencies are so if you use less stiff materials like PETG or abs the resonance frequency will decrease and chances are that the amplitude will be higher so you must be aware of that i'm going to make an enclosure so i'm going to stabilize it at the top please let me know in the comments what you think about this method if you want to uh, to know more about this or you want to know the actual formulas that i've used send me an email and i can uh, send you what i've done to get to these uh, conclusions but now i'm going to finish editing this video and i really hope You've learned a thing or two about this one and that it's a bit more clear what, what my intentions are. Yeah, I really hope that you've enjoyed watching. And thanks again everyone for subscribing to getting this channel beyond 10,000 subscribers. It's really awesome. I'm going to work on the rest of this project and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.